that you, we would do to make it that people actually use is there will always be email and there will always be some way to instantly communicate with someone. And there'll be a bunch of stuff in the middle like Yammer and Chatter. We're that thing that will always be there, the instant ping of communication to the people that you're working with. The other Chris. Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, one of the things we hear a lot is, as folks wrestle with all of these admittedly great ways of communicating and collaborating with each other is they're starting to get interface fatigue. You know, it's like I've got 20 different UIs I'm jockeying between to, to chat with everybody and got a buddy list here and a social graph here. And yeah. It seems like your approach is wanting to pull everything into your UI. Like, is, do you think you, you can stay on top of the stack or ultimately will you need to plug into like a Facebook social graph or something where the identity is already being maintained? Right, uh, I think for the most part, um, the only way you can make sure something is actually really good is making it yourself. Um, and that's actually one of the reasons why uh, Google Chat, it, they follow the XMPP spec really strictly, which is why they don't do group chat really well, because it's really crazy. So we just built our own thing because it was that important to do ourselves. Um, and as far as going on to other social graphs, most companies that request things like LDAP integration and all of these more enterprisey things that we haven't built yet, but I'm sure we will in the future, we say that we don't have it and they're like, whatever, we don't care because everything we're using now sucks. So I, I mean, that's the actual answer we get. Andy, even though he said he doesn't need any money, what, we, what question would you ask him over lunch if he came for a free lunch? When they're in the client and they've, they've had the session stored, what's the method of organization? What's the user experience like for saving and, and, and whether it's folders or going back and you know, just shared sessions? Sure, so for the, uh, I'm sorry, what, can you repeat the first question real quick? I was already uh, answering the second one in my head. Prevalent use cases. Oh, okay, yeah, so we actually thought that most of it was gonna be strictly group chat, and that's what um, people were gonna use it for. Their development team, the software teams at the engineer and the designer, and everyone could be in one room at once. Um, but it actually turns out that over 50% of our messages are the one-to-one -one instant messaging. So they're actually replacing something that we thought was just gonna be a nice to have feature. Um, but uh, I think that that's basically the uh, companies want one big thing that their company can, every single person uses and they don't have to wonder about it. Um, for the second part, can you ask me? User ask me right experience now? once you're looking back at those historical Oh, it would say right now it's almost all search. Um, so the rooms have names and they're all persistent. So you'd make a room called development team and then you can manually browse through the chat history on days that there was some and all the files are in there. Otherwise you just search and that's been by far the most effective way to get back to conversations that you've had. Other questions, guys? I have a, one more. So this may not be you guys, but uh, often folks who, who target SMB, they do that and it kind of becomes like a little end around of like avoiding big scale problems. Yeah. Um, do you feel, do you feel, is there a little bit of that being the case or um, have you guys already contemplated, like if this really takes off, like can you handle the scale? Well, that's actually one of the, we started this off with the small and medium business just because at worst, worst case scenario, it's a lifestyle business, which would be fine. Because um, we thought that bigger companies were using things like Lotus Same Time and all of these other things. Uh, I think each week we get, we get dozens of requests for companies with many thousands of people looking to get on our software. Um, and so that's basically exactly what we're working on now, helping them scale up to, and a lot of them are accommodating and helping us do that because they want to say in what you know goes on. So it's actually been a pretty good way to ramp up to those larger companies. I've got a packaging question for you. What do those larger um, companies with over 100 users get for the extra two bucks a month? Um, Nothing awesome, awesome software. <laughs> yeah. The privilege to pay more. Yeah. Okay. And what happens if uh, a vendor like Salesforce starts including feature sets that are very similar to your product? How do you compete against somebody that's selling into the enterprise? Um, that's a good question. It hasn't happened yet. And we do, uh, I'd like to think that we just do it really, really well. And uh, normally the best product doesn't always win in enterprise. Um, I think that's starting to change. And uh, I, that's definitely a good, a good change. What about the adoption process? Wh who's finding you, how are they finding you, and how's your solution 
penetrating the organization. Sure. Well, the good thing is a lot of people, especially here in Silicon Valley, tell each other what yeah. they use all sure. the time. Um, and I think our you know, conversion rate of people signing up just from the homepage to paying customer, we don't take credit card up front or anything, but I think it's over 7%. So we now have a lot of customers, and when you have thousands of people signed in all the time, that's a lot of people to go out and tell people about your company. So we don't have any you know, official sales or really any marketing. I mean, the billboards, just, we just thought that was awesome, so that's why we did it. Um, but it tur it's turned out to be really good, too. So it's word of mouth at this point? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. What's the plan after that? Um, I assume as soon as we start getting into you know, big companies and big time sales and making sure they have everything they need, we're definitely have to have customer support reps and sales and all of that type of stuff. And hopefully we can fund that with, through the profits and not have to raise too much. Terrific. Other questions, guys? You all set? Good job. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.